Okay, if you're just joining this tutorial for the first time, in the last recording, we just set up the bare bones of this application. And what this application is going to do is it's going to allow us to record our voice and essentially talk to ChatGPT and then pass what we said to ChatGPT and have it speak back to us. And the way that we're doing that is using the Google Cloud Speech API. So this is just our site infrastructure here. We've got our title, we've got a record button. We're gonna log out what we said. We're gonna log out what ChatGPT said. And then we've got another kind of hidden container here that's gonna have an audio player. And that audio player is going to uh, play back what ChatGPT said. So that's what our page looks like. Uh, here's what our code looks like for the most part. We have our backend Node.js Express application. Right now, all it's doing is importing a bunch of requirements that we're gonna need, a bunch of libraries. It's specifying a port for our server. It's specifying a couple of directories for our templates, our front-end HTML, and our front-end assets, things like images, JavaScript, CSS, etc. It's telling Express how we want to handle requests coming from the client using this body parser. It's by default serving an index.html file, and then it's just kicking off the server and listening for anything coming through on port 33333. Our package JSON sorry, shows our scripts so we're just running node index, just one, one thing here. Um, it shows what our dependencies are so far. Then we've got just like an empty CSS file, an empty JavaScript file, and our HTML code here. So as you can see, we've got that audio player. We've got all of our containers and things like that here. Pretty basic stuff so far. Now, what do we wanna do first? First thing we wanna do is make sure that when the user clicks that record button, it does something. So I'm just gonna paste in some code here. Um, when the document is ready and all of this DOM content has loaded, we're going to add event listeners for when that button is pushed. So we've got this function called Add event listeners and we're just actually listening for two different actions on the same button so when people push that record button down we're gonna say on record down when people let up on their mouse button we're gonna say on record up and then we're gonna stop recording so let's start with that on record down function This is actually going to be an asynchronous function. We want to manage the state of the application. And if we were using a framework like React, we would have some libraries and tools to do this stuff. This is going to be a very simple prototype, so we're just going to kind of manage our own state in this JavaScript file. Um, then we're going to manage the UI to let the user know what's happening. Then we're going to tell the server to access the user's mic and start recording. And then we're gonna listen for a response from the server. So this is how I tend to like to stub out functionality. Before I write any code, I just make a plan for what each function is gonna do. So let's do the same thing for on record up. So what needs to happen here? I'm gonna paste a few things in. We need to manage the state just like we always did. We need to manage the UI, let the user know what's happening. We need to tell the server to stop recording. We need to stop looking for transcript results. Um, you remember up here we were listening um, for response from the server, which actually should be 
listen for transcript results from the server. Then we need to tell the server to submit the transcription that we have. And that's going to pass it on to ChatGPT. ChatGPT is going to generate a response from what we asked it to do. So we're going to listen for that. Once we have it, we're going to write that response to the screen. We're also going to generate an audio file of whatever ChatGPT told us. We're going to play that audio file. OK, so that's the roadmap, but let's take it step by step. So first off, let's tell the server to record. So I'm just going to call another function called handle server record. Let's go ahead and make that function. And I'm going to paste in just some boilerplate code here that I do for any of these sorts of requests. So what we're going to do is when we call this function, we're going to return a promise. And I'm not going to get into promises here, but they're a method of asynchronous communication in JavaScript where we're going to wait until this promise is either resolved or rejected. So inside here, you can see we've got these parameters, resolve or reject. If there's an error, we'll reject. If everything works as planned, we'll resolve the function and pass some data back to whatever called it if we need it. So we've got this fetch call, which fetch if you're not familiar, is the way that JavaScript goes and gets data from somewhere else on the internet, in this case, uh, from our server. So in these double quotes here, we're going to specify what URL to go get. The method here is get. And we have a few different options. The most common are get or post. So we're either sending something to the server or getting something from the server. In this case, we just need to get stuff from the server. So method is get. We're going to expect JSON back. We probably actually don't need this because we're, we're not sending any data to the server, but we'll leave that in. And then when the server responds, we're going to parse that response as JSON. We're expecting JSON back. So turn this into JSON. And then with that JSON data, I'm just going to log the data to see what came back, make sure it looks like we expected. And then I'm going to resolve this promise. Uh, if there's an error, I'm catching that error here. I'm going to log that error, and I'm going to reject the promise and return back the error so that we can like log it to the screen. So the last thing I need to do here is just specify that URL. I'm going to make it up. It can be anything we want. Uh, let's just call it API record voice. So this is going to be passed on to our server. And anything that's an API request, I'm just going to preface it with API. And then the function name is going to be record voice. OK, so let's head over to our back end. And we'll just make that function. So we're going to say app.get. And remember, this is a get request. If it were a post request, we'd say app.post. API record voice is what we called it over in main.js. And I always pass these parameters to Node and Express. These store what the request was and allow us to use this response object to respond back to the client. So here, I'm just going to say API record voice as the function name so that we know that this function has been called properly. And I'll get into this in a second. But basically, what we're going to do is we're going to start this recognition stream. This is going to be a Google Cloud speech um, way of handling the recording. If this hasn't been established, we're going to do it here. And then we're going to start recording. And then we're going to return a response, letting the client know we're recording. And the way that we do that is we're just going to say response.status200. That is a code that the server uses to say everything is OK. Uh, you may have seen like a 404, same thing. That's when there's an error. Response status 200 JSON. We're giving it back this JSON object with a message that says recording. Now let's check and see back here. That's when, when it gets that message, it's going to turn it into JSON, and we're going to log the data. So we should get data back that says message recording. Let's see if that works. We'll open up our console. We'll 
restart the server because we changed some code there and we don't have live reload set up on the server or client actually right now. So uh, make sure our console is active. And when we hit this button, we get this object message recording. So it looks like things worked on the client side. What about on the server side? Sure enough, we have our log that we put there, which is API record voice. So we know that function was hit on the client, or rather on the server, because we see this. And we know that it came back OK because we see message recording on the client. OK, here's where we need to set up our Google Cloud speech stuff. Uh, and I found it's a bit buried, but Google has some documentation on how to do this. It's really great. They give us code in multiple languages. I've got Node.js loaded up here. And the first thing we can see is that it imports that library into Node.js. So we're going to do the same thing here. And of course, we need to install that. So that was npmi at Google Cloud. We know that worked because it's now in our dependencies. And we don't see any errors here. Now we're creating speech client. We're making a request object and passing it a configuration. And then we're starting that recognition stream. So we're saying to the speech client, streaming recognize this request. If there's an error, log that error. If there's data, we're going to log the transcript. So this is a bit confusing, but apparently this is when the data comes back, it will give us a bunch of results. We're going to take the first result in that array um, and log the transcript. We'll, we'll see how this goes. But that's kind of like how the boilerplate code goes. We're going to say create read stream of a file name and pipe that to a recognized stream. Now, this is the part that's not going to work because we don't have a file. We want to record the user's mic and write that to a file. So we'll need to handle that in a second. But uh, that's kind of the general flow here. So let's go clean up this code. So importing the library is fine. Creating the speech client is fine. I'm going to put a few things here. These are variables. And you notice I use the word let, which means they're not going to stay constant. We're going to, uh, they're going to change. And we're just going to initialize the variables here. So the first one is our stream script. And that's blank for now, but that's going to be the thing that we're just going to keep adding to. So as we recognize text from the microphone, this is going to you know, be added to with what we are saying. The next one is the recognize stream. So when we initialize the recognize stream, it will be stored in this variable in case we need to use it later and, and call functions on it. And then we're going to have the recording itself. Uh, and I'll be using node record. I know that. So I've added this note, but we haven't imported that library yet. We'll get to that in a second. Now, where we have this config, you can tell it's already specifying some things that we haven't declared in any sort of variable. So if we ran this code right now, we'd throw an error. I'm going to organize this a bit better so that we can include this config in the right way. So I'm declaring a few constants here. With my config variables, I like to put them all in caps just to make that clear, like that's what they are. So our sample rate is going to be 16,000. The higher this is, the more accurate the recognition is going to be. But obviously, the slower it probably will run on the server. And that might cause some problems. So 16,000 is a good number to target here. Use interim results, false. Uh, if that's true, we're going to get this steady stream of stuff that's logging to the screen versus if we just are kind of storing it, waiting till we get some other request, and then returning back the response. So for now, I've got use interim results to false. And then I'm going to specify a config object. So the encoding is going to be linear 16. I put some options for what this can be. 
I don't know enough about audio to know what to use, but um, Google Cloud has a link. I'm passing my sample rate hertz in here. Uh, the language I'm expecting folks to speak is English. And then this is the limit to how long I'm going to let somebody sit there and talk on the mic. So uh, I've got that set to 290,000 milliseconds. Why 290,000? Not sure. That was probably some code I copied in. What is that? Uh, 4.83 minutes. So well, that seems long, but we'll leave it. So right now, since we just pasted this into the root of our file, if we were to run our server, it would just try to do all this stuff right when the server starts up. We need to trigger it when we call this API record voice function. So remember, we put this placeholder. If there's no recognized stream, create one. Right now, there wouldn't be one. So we need to say init recognize stream. We'll call that function. We're making a config object, We're passing it that config constant that we created above with our specified hertz, etc. We're not going to be using interim results, but we're going to allow that to be a variable that we could toggle if we say decided later we want to. And then that recognize stream that we declared with let, we're now initializing properly by saying speech client dot streaming recognize, passing in the config. If there's an error, we're going to log out the error. If there's data, we're going to call this on recognize data function, which we haven't made yet. And then we're just going to log to the console, recognize stream initialized. So let's make this on recognize data function. So now we can delete those here. And let's just see where we're at. Server's running. Refresh, no errors yet. Hit record. We got some kind of error. Let's see what happened on the server here. Reference error recognize config is not defined. Oh, where'd that go? Probably uh, when I was stopping and starting recording. Let me add that back in. Try that. Speech client not defined. Oh, right. Their code called it client. I called it speech client. The reason I didn't use client is because that's a often a reserved word. I don't like the confusion between client being our front end and speech client being the thing that's going to handle streaming audio. Let's try again. This is how it goes. Recording. I don't see any errors here. And I see recognize stream initialized. So I think we're good. OK, so the last thing I'm going to do here is remember we had that funny object that we'd be receiving back from the speech client. I'm storing that into a temporary variable here called transcript. If we have that, we're going to store transcript as that. Otherwise, we're going to say you're at the end of your transcript limit. I don't remember where I got this code. Um, it seems to work. Then we're going to pass that transcript to our global variable that we called stream script. If we're using interim results, we're just going to keep overwriting that variable with the entirety of this transcript. But if we're not using streaming results, we're going to be adding to it. So that's this plus equals here. And then we'll just log what the stream script is. OK, where are we at uh, time-wise here? Uh, it's been about 20 minutes. So I think I'm going to stop here. But let's recap what we did. We allowed our record button on the front end to send a fetch request to the back end to this API record voice. In that, we initialized this recognize stream, which is going to listen for data and try to transcribe it. The next thing that we need to do is we need to actually initialize that recorder if it hasn't been initialized and start recording when somebody hits the record button. So in the next video, we'll do that. I'll post the code where we ended up here, and we'll see you in the next video.